Hello. In this unit, we're going to introduce elements from chapter three of our textbook. Chapter three of our textbook is on something called determinants. A little historical background before we dive in. Determinants are numbers associated with square matrices. And there was a point where determinants had a major place in introductory linear algebra, like we'd be spending weeks on them. They've had a real fall from grace since then. Um, determinants are complicated to define, they're hard to teach, and from a linear, I should say, from an undergraduate to linear algebra point of view, they're not useful for a whole lot of applications. This isn't to say that as a subject, determinants are not worthwhile. It is to say that to see what makes determinants worthwhile, you really need to be taking graduate level classes. And there was kind of a movement in math education where people said, okay, if most of these applications are in graduate level classes, maybe we shouldn't really be stressing them in an undergraduate context. That being said, we will need determinants for one thing in this class, admittedly for one thing only. So let's dive in and let's define a determinant. The determinant of a square matrix is a number associated with it. The determinant is defined inductively. Say that you have a matrix that just contains a single number, a one by one matrix. Then the determinant of that matrix is just the number. Now suppose you have a two by a two matrix. And now that there's no risk that it will be confused with absolute value notation, let's introduce an alternative piece of notation. We can represent the determinant of a matrix by changing these brackets to vertical lines. The determinant of a two by two matrix is the product of the diagonal elements minus the product of the anti-diagonal elements. And now here's where things are going to get messy. The determinant of a three by three matrix we're going to pick any row or column. It doesn't matter which one. 
eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let's pick the second column. This next step we could do in our heads, but since we're presenting the material for the first time, we're going to create a sign chart. And the sign chart is going to be an array of plus and minus signs the same size as the matrix, starting with plus in the upper left corner, and then alternating. And now we're going to look at the row or column we selected and you see each of these numbers corresponds to something in the sign chart. We're going to have negative B, negative B times something plus E. Times something minus H times something. And as I say, um, you, this sign chart you can really do in your head. Just remember that you start positive and alternate. So positive negative, positive, negative. What are these somethings? Let's start with B. Suppose that we look at this B and we cross off the row that contains B and we cross off the column that contains B. We're left with a two by two array of numbers. We can think of this as a matrix, D, F, G, I. But we're going to multiply um, negative B by is the determinant of this matrix. D, F, G, I. And now over here, we'll repeat that. We'll cover up, hmm, my, my fat fingers aren't really designed for this, but we'll cover up the, the column that contains E or the row that contains E, sorry, and the column that contains E, and the numbers that make it, if we cover both these up, are A, C, G, I. And we're going to take the determinant of that matrix. And then same thing for H. Cover up the row, cover up the columns. What remains is A, C, D, F. And now this determinant 
is defined in terms of these two by two determinants. Now, these two by two determinants, we know this is di minus gf. This is ai minus gc. This is af minus cd. So negative b times this plus c times this minus h times this is the determinant. I warned you when I was sort of talking about why determinants were out of favor, I warned you that they were messy. And this definition generalizes in a natural way. If instead of a three by three matrix, you had a four by four matrix, you'd approach this in a similar way. You'd select a row or a column. And I know it's really not obvious from this definition, but I promise it does not matter what row or column you select. You'll wind up with the same number in any case. And rather than make a sign chart, let's just go positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Each of these is being multiplied by the determinant you get if you cover up a column and you cover up a row. Again, the row and column we're covering up are the row and column that have this number in it. So similarly over here, we cover up the second column and the third row. And now you have four three by three three determinants, each of these determinants you find using this definition. So this gets overwhelming very quickly in terms of the amount of time it takes to do this, but that's the definition as we will present it.